Welcome everybody to the HTC Invitational. I'm your host Nimsh and I'm joined here by my co-host Monk. How are you doing, man? We had two amazing matches so far. Yeah, both matches went really down to the wire, 3-2. And unfortunately for uh, H the HTC players, both Forsen and Tice won their respective matches. And some pretty close games, especially that last one from Eka versus Tice, where uh, Tice, like, he just has all the answers to the Grim Patrons. He's able to fold board clear with two Hellfires. And uh, just a great series overall. And if, you know what? If you enjoy that series, you know what you can do. You can support HCC. Um, use the hashtag pound uh, hashtag HCC Esports and uh, just tweet at them. Tell you tell them how you like the matches so far, and can, you can win some pretty awesome swag. What can you win, Nimsh? Well, you can win a couple of T-shirts. We have twelve T-shirts we are giving away. We have two tablets and we have one HTC phone. And you know, uh, Hearthstone is a game that actually is designed for the phone as well. There is a you can play Hearthstone on the phone, and the new phone uh, HTC M9 is actually amazing. Uh, it was released what like one month ago or something. It's like top notch new phone you can get. And uh, well, about the T-shirts, I, I believe those are the team shirts, right? Because um, all, all, like we have HTC sponsoring the tournament, but we also have those HTC players uh, and teams like Cloud9, TSM, Team Liquid, uh, you know, giving something from their side. So um, pretty amazing stuff. It's not like we are only giving stuff and prizes to the players playing. We can always give also some stuff to you guys watching. Just tweet at HTC, um, hashtag HTC Esports, say anything, and uh, you know you you, yeah. you will have a chance. Yeah. Typing um, exclamation mark giveaway and exclamation mark raffle is not doing anything, I believe. Well, instead of doing that, you can even send your tweets in from an HTC phone. And you'll get some extra bonus points there. All right. Um, I just want to remind everyone what are we doing here. We are playing a tournament. There are 16 players selected. Eight players sponsored by HTC. Eight players not sponsored by HTC yet. They are facing against each other. And uh, we had we had some amazing stories. We had Forsen win versus Nairia game one. And we had Tyson L win versus Ecop. Um, those players are playing a single elimination bracket, so whoever loses is eliminated. The winner of the tournament tomorrow will be the guy who was never defeated by anyone. He will be the champion, the 100% the winner. Uh, we'll have all those matches today, by the way. Savitz versus Hyped coming up next. Then we'll have, um, during the day, Strife Crow Dog, Colento Farba, Tide Zalaya, Show RDU, Tramp Chucky, uh, Conquest Best of Five. Amazing decks, amazing players, amazing Hearthstone. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, just overall, what what an amazing series of the games we have coming up. Just so many great players, pretty much all the big names in the scene right now will be competing uh, for the awesome trophy of the uh, AC HTC Championship. If we and actually had a trophy, overall. Uh, of course, five thousand dollars. But uh, if we actually had a trophy, I would like to have like a a phone trophy being made, right? Wouldn't that be yeah, pretty that awesome? Yeah, that would be so cool, actually. And um. Actually, a, a f maybe an actual phone that you can play Hearthstone on. Yeah. But $5,000 is, uh, is amazing as well. And uh, the first place winner is uh, getting $2,500, which is enough to buy a good phone, I believe. And some other stuff, maybe even a couple of cards for Hearthstone. Um, so pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, Monk, what are you expecting from this tournament? Like, what, what would you like to see? Deck -wise, um, well, deck-wise, I would, to be honest, I would like to see just... A lot of uh, more interesting decks, but to be honest, uh, I fully ex expect to see a lot of Grim Patient Warriors, a lot of Handlocks and Zoos, and a lot of Hunters. And uh, I wouldn't expect too much diversity, but for whichever player is um, able to pull out like the strange decks, like the more creative decks, I'll give bonus points to them. We've already seen Maligus Warlock uh, being brought by Nari. Unfortunately, he lost, uh, but maybe we're going to see more Dragon decks. I I personally would love to see more dragon decks. Maybe Dragon Hunter, um, Dragon Warlock, that worked. Uh, maybe the one of the players will bring the Dragon Warrior with um, Nefarian and Isera. Um, that's stuff that's really exciting. And, you know, after the BRM release. But also I would like to give a, a big shout out to Trump. Um, and uh, I'm sure we have a lot of Trump fans uh, watching us right now because we are streaming on Trump's channel. So a uh, big thank you for, for kind of like giving us your channel to have this tournament. We promise not to break it, right, Monk? Uh, no promises there. Okay. No promises. <laughs> Everything can happen. Yeah. We're going Trump wild. Trump W. To say okay. hi. Okay. 
All right, so um, Savitz versus Hyped coming up next. Team Liquid, Savitz versus Temple Storm, Hyped. What do we know about those guys? Yeah, uh, Savitz obviously is one of the more like most renowned players in Hearthstone. Um, he had really great success early on in Hearthstone, pretty much being the first like uh, legend player on both the NA and EU server. And he's kind of ridden his success out. Like even now, he's been winning just a lot of stuff. Sea Story Cup. He won uh, ESL Legendary Series, one of the qualifiers uh, last season. He won the OG and uh, Invitational last year, and he also won an OG and Show match uh, earlier this year. So overall, just one of the most respected players in the scene. Meanwhile, we have Hype, too. Um, he's uh, he's another ladder god. He's uh, He was rank one last season, or last year, rather, in terms of BlizzCon points on the, on the North American ladder. Um, recently, though, he's been... Although he hasn't had too many results, no tournament wins, he has been doing a little bit better in tournaments, just with like just based on like the kind of decks that he runs, which pretty much will be Mage, uh, Druid, Hunter, and Rogue. But this tournament, he's actually going to be bringing something different. I've actually never seen uh, hyped play Warrior or Warlock in tournaments in the last few months, I would say. So definitely a bit of a change up from him. Oh man, this is exciting. So we have Savitz versus hyped. Hype bringing, as you said, Mage, Warlock, Warrior versus Savitz's lineup, which is uh, one of the strongest lineups we talked about. Hunter, Warlock, and Warrior. Uh, we already see the Zoo. Is it the Zoo, though? No, this is actually the, um, the Demon... How do you call this deck? Is it the Demon Zoo? Is it like a Demon Lock? I, I like to call it uh, my very technical name, which is Demon uh, Midrange... M Midrange Demon Zoo, I guess. All right, Monk. You know what? Let's let's d d design a new name for this deck. I'm going to call it Zeman Lock. All right. Well, Zeman Lock it is, and uh, we're gonna see a very esports-like Zeman Lock here because, wow, what a great uh, implosion here! And I like trading into the um, to the uh, broken down Harvest Golem because it, this allows something like a Goblin Blast Mage on the following turn, and that's actually gonna be really great. Uh, what do you think about running Harvest Golem and Mech Mage? Do you like it? It's a it's a tech choice that Hyped has uh, brought in, and it's I think it's inspired by actually hit one of his teammates, Raynad. Raynad was like the first person to put um, on, uh, to put in the Harvest Golems in, and it's just like kind of like a I, I keep having wanting to like talk with Hyped about his decision to do that. I guess it's more of a stickier minion, and I th would like to think that it's actually better in this matchup. Yeah, I also like it. And um, talking about uh, teammates from from hype, the Temple Storm. The Temple Storm guys, they they, they really like Mech Mage, and they are bringing mostly the the version with Water Elementals and uh, Blinktron. So I wonder if we are going to see those cards in Hype's deck. Yeah, um, Hype's de uh, Mech Mage deck that I've seen him use so many times. Um, he has Harvest Golems, but no Water Elementals, and he has Blinktrons. So just or one Blinktron rather, because you can only have one. So those are kind of like the small choices that. Hyped has changed into the Mech Mage deck. Also, running Lothab is not uh, that usual. Like sometimes um, people run Lothab, but sometimes people cut it uh, in favor of Azur Drakes or maybe maybe Ragnaros. Like it really depends. Like Mech Mage is still um, fluctuating. Like, say like there is a couple of slots you can change. Is he going to play that Blast Mage? I guess he. Uh, wait. I think. Savitz might be having some problems here because, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on because it's actually Savitz's turn, I believe. Is this game bugged? Because uh, yeah, we like, might have. It, it seems like we have a spectator bug. Um, well, it might actually just be the actual game bugging because Savitz certainly had like a some very strange reactions. Floating Nurbian egg. Yeah, floating Nurbian egg, floating uh, haunted creeper. Are you sure it's a game bug though? Because you know we have a lot of dragons now, right? After BRM. So maybe the Nerubanek kind of like wanted to be a dragon and tried flying on top of the board. Is it possible? That, 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 that was a great joke, Nimsh. I, I appreciated it. Uh, but no, it's, unfortunately, it's, it's, not, it's not a dragon egg, Nimsh. You have to I know, get the, it's the two eggs uh, straightened out. Yeah, it's, it's a Nerubian egg. So it's a spider, and I don't think spiders think they're dragons. Well, but you know, you can confuse the eggs, right? Because mostly, most of the eggs, they look the same anyway. 
Would you be able, like, if I give you two eggs and one is in the ruby and one is the dragon egg, would you be able to to say which is which? Uh, probably not because I would be like, hey, these are just chicken eggs. There's no such thing as Nubian eggs or dragon eggs in the real world. All right, should, all uh, eggs looks like chicken. You should we're probably, back. Yeah, we're back. You should probably play less WoW or uh, less Hearthstone, I guess, if you are if you think these things actually is, exist in the real world, right? I never said that, but... <laughs> all right, Monk, so... Uh, apparently that was an um, observer mode bug, so we do have this Voiter on the board at 4-7. Yeah, I think uh, what uh, Savitz was actually reacting to was that Goblin Blast Mage, and what happened was probably that the Goblin Blast Mage killed all the minions from Savitz. It certainly looks that way, because Spider Shredder is undamaged, and um, there is a, a very good board for hype. Alright, so what's the order of board state here? Who's winning? Who's, who's behind? Um, well, I think Savitz, in terms of board state, he'll definitely be winning on the next turn. But what he's really afraid of is uh, just his opponent bursting him down with fireballs. But that Defender of Argus was probably exactly what Savitz needed. Like, doing a Knife Juggler into Defender of Argus and following that up with Dr. Boom is going to be pretty great, I would say. Then, even following that up with a Bane of Doom to possibly summon either... Um, Either the Felguard or a Melganis will actually protect Savitz fairly well from any fireballs that Hyped may be able to draw. Yeah, it looks pretty amazing. And also getting that 5 8. What do you think about getting. Okay, I like it. Like he uses the 1 1 to just get the shield out. There was a small possibility uh, of the knife hitting the, the shield, but then this board is actually amazing. Can he clear. Do you go for the mech clear? Uh. I think the Blast Mage represents more of a threat, just uh, by its attacking power. So I actually like clearing off the Blast Mage with your Nubian Spider and then going for face. The Mech Mage oh. probably won't have many uh, silences, or yeah, they they don't generally they don't have any silences. So I think that um, this Void t t uh, Void Terror is pretty safe, unless Hyped gets a reversing switch off this uh, Tinker Town Technician. Oh, he has a Harrison Jones. That's a nice tech, especially because of Green Patron. Um, Mech Mage is not that good versus Green Patron deck, but with Harrison Jones, it might actually be much better. Um, yeah. Also here, there is a couple of traps, though. Like we said, Savitz is in a good position to, to regain board uh, board control, but Pilot to Shredder can always uh, change into something nasty, like a Flame Tongue. Um, Doomsayer is not that amazing here, but Flame Tongue, I think, is, is pretty good. Um, also, the Mad Scientist and the Mirror Entity. That will stop Dr. Boom from being played next turn. Yeah, certainly. That maybe will force a Bane of Doom, for instance. And what that Harrison Jones tells me is that, yeah, indeed, Hyped is running Blinktron in his Mech Mage, because I don't think you're going to run Harrison Jones and Mech Mage if you don't run Blinktron. But then look how many 5-drops he's running. Um, maybe he actually cut the Azure Drakes, because normally you're running double Azure Drake. But here with Lothab and Harrison Jones, if you run Blink Chung as well, I will believe Azdrix are not in this deck. Oh, Here's Patient Assassin. That's a great one, because that, yeah. that can actually just kill the Dr. Boom. That's true. That's an amazing card. And he's getting the Mirror Entity, I believe. There is a slight chance it's a counter spell. All right, this is Mirror Entity. Yeah, this combination of Mirror Entity and a Lothab just kind of locks the beats out, out of so many options. He, it's hard for him to play spells, or actually impossible for him to play spells at this point. And it's going to be difficult for him to play minions because they just get copied. Also, he's so low on health. So right now, if he goes for Boom, he he, he has to kill a Patient Assassin, and then he has Dr. Boom on the opposing side of the board. So you have to go for the Void Caller. But if you go for the Void Caller, it's still not great, not looking great. And he must be thinking about one Fireball at least. If there is one fireball, he's dead. Right? Exactly. Alright, maybe not exactly. But also the knife chakra is, is weird here. So let's say if you are afraid of hitting the, the Nerubian egg with the with the juggle, do you attack into the 5-5? Five five, and then you play Void Caller. Giving your opponent possible five points of damage. Well, Giant is not really a thing you want. 
So still yeah. Void Caller play. A good thing for Savitz is that when the Void Caller dies, oh, he's not going for the Void Caller this turn. But if Void Caller will be will be dead there, um, there is a chance for a second Void Caller to come to play. Uh, I think what he was thinking that was that if he played Void Caller, then uh, if his opponent had Fireball in hand, that would have been lethal. Oh, that's that's really cute from Hyped, activating his own Nubian Egg with a pink. Well, he's certainly not afraid of Flame Strike or Shadow Flame. Um, yeah, Savitz has to tap at this point, and yeah, I believe that's it. Nothing that's can Savitz, that Savitz can do. Yep. Just yeah, he's just testing out the secrets here to see if his opponent had a counter spell, but unfortunately, uh, Hype's Mech Mage deck has won that game. It's one, uh, I would say, a, probably an, an unfavorable matchup, and Hyped will get uh, one point on the board. Yeah, it's very uh, very good by Hyped. So Hyped is going to to win that game and um, have a lead over Savitz. We can see Hyped already looking at the notes. Both players are really analytical. I would say like their play style is kind of similar. Would you agree? Um, I guess they're both like, they both tend to be more controlly players. But they're not afraid to, for instance, run a mech mage. Um, but I don't think they're like Savitz at least isn't like a isn't like an aggro hunter player or a or a face hunter player. So yeah, I, I would say your assessment is probably correct. They they do have very similar play styles. They both like rogue a lot, for instance. Hyped being like one of the best rogues in the world, pretty much known for rogue. Yeah, Savitz loves rogue as well. All right, so um, right now we are going to see warrior versus hunter. The guess is Green Patron versus Midrange. Well, with Glaive Zuka, it seems like face. Well, I would probably say that this is probably going to be the the hybrid version of Hunter yeah. that Savitz has been playing recently. It's a I'm very good list. Weapons. Yeah, weapons are good, but I mean, having three of them probably not like the best thing that you want. Um, the question is, do you some... want two of them? Do you, do you keep yeah. fireworks and death spite? I think uh, I think that death spite is actually really good against like animal companions. It's good against um, piloted shredders, so I wouldn't mind keeping them. The problem is if your opponent just has a lot of like weak creatures on the board that fireworks can't deal with, and then after fireworks you want to equip the death spite, and sometimes you're just taking way too too much damage to face. All right, so oh Hype's keeping two weapons in the, in hands. That that hand though, it's just like it's perfect for Hyped. But at the same time, Savitz has a good hand as well. Like he's going to be able, able to curve out really well with his hand. Two drop, three drop, four drop, and he can even fit in a coin somewhere in there. For someone I mean. Oh wow, and he gets a one drop as well. Lepernimsh comes to the play. You know, I'm so happy that people finally realize that Leper Gnome is essential in Hunter, even if you're running high mains. That's the card. You have to you have to play Leper Gnome. Of course, Nimsh. You you would be happy. That that is the essential Nimsh card for um, those of you who are not as familiar with Nimsh. It is. It is a great aggro card, great one drop. A bit overshadowed in the times of uh, Undertaker, but right now it's back. Dealing damage to Green Patron though is a bit awkward because now um, Savitz enabled the, um, the Battle Rage. But then again, he is the one being aggressive. Yeah, I think uh, as the Hunter player, you can't really play too much around Battle Rage. And, and wow, look at that. A shield block and a shield slam. That means this is actually... It's the Control not Warrior. A, yeah, it's Control Warrior, not Patron Warrior. And I think that's definitely... Uh, that's definitely because he... like. A patron warrior is obviously like most people regard it as the stronger deck, but yeah. control warrior a lot of people regard it as a counter to grim patron warrior. So definitely an interesting choice for hype to bring kind of like the counter to the best decks rather than just playing the best decks by themselves. It is it is definitely a contender, but then against uh, this kind of hunter, the matchup is similar, I'd say. Or is it favor is it favoring the 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 hunter more? Because of the high mains that we haven't seen yet, but we assume this is the, the midrange hybrid with the high mains. I think it's about 50-50, to be honest. Um, like, the, like Warrior does have a hard time dealing with high mains, but... 
yeah, there's just like so, so many ways for Word to like curve out really well, as you can see from Hyped in the situation that it's not too big of a threat, I think. A very interesting play of Acolyte on free, just uh, playing into the weapon. So this means that he is not really expecting to draw more cards from it, just wants to trade it and, uh, with the weapon charge. Yeah, I think I don't think you can be too greedy here. Like just getting one card from the Acolyte and using up that one charge is kind of okay. The benefit is that when you use the charge, at least, you get rid of the weapon, so then the weapon is not being powered by secrets being played, maybe, in the future. So, yes. that's all right. So, it's definitely not happy to see that death spite. And it looks like just Hyped has all the answers. Um, a big part about this matchup is being able to set up your turn 6, or the Hunter's turn 6, in order to get fit that high main in. And Hyped is actually doing a very good job preventing uh, some good turns being set up, even though Savitz has drawn pretty well, curving out pretty well. Um, it's just that these weapons are, they, they get so much value from killing off these mid-range minions. Oh yeah, certainly. And uh, Hype has like a lot of ways to, to heal himself up as well. So right now it's looking uh, pretty good. I mean, he just has to take his time. And um, just keep playing, keep playing his cards. This is the Contra Warrior, just you have to be patient, you have to answer what's being played on board. Uh, Nerubian Egg is... <laughs> Savitz is just face bombing. It's like, oh, I wanted a minion that is going to deal damage. And uh, this is not doing any damage for now, at least. Um, but it's good versus it's... Brawl in the long run. Yeah, it's, yeah it protects you against Brawl. And um, you know what, Savitz? We have seen Savitz is running Glaive Zookas, so this Egg might actually get activated in the future. Looking at Savitz, I'm thinking he's uh, actually pretty blue right now. Do you think he's feeling blue? Especially after the Nerubian Egg? Yeah, if he were green, he would die. Oh, look at that high main in time. It's a, it's going to be a decent high main, but the issue is... Uh, like, Hyped is set up to deal with this high main. His board is actually fairly strong, um, and he has a shield block plus shield slam combo. Yeah, but on the other hand, it is still a lot of resources to deal with the high main, and uh, Hype is kind of running out of cards. Like, Shield Block is going to bring him one card. Whenever I'm playing versus Warrior, and I'm looking at Warrior having only four cards, I'm like, yeah, Warrior is running out of cards. Because if Warrior, like, normally, Warrior will have seven plus. With four cards, it's possible that um, the hand is actually clunky with Ragnaros, maybe, or like Grimash, that's not going to do a lot on turn six. So here's Savit just playing a couple of minions and uh, preparing that high main turn. Or maybe a, a knife juggler turn next turn. Wow, it's, it's hype drawing all four weapons in his uh in like the first ten cards of his deck. And normally like that's actually a bad thing, but against this type of mid-range hunter that just just tries to put mini mid-range creatures on the board, it actually is gonna turn out fairly well. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, what do you think about just Death Spite here? Uh, because you do expect the high main on on six. Attack maybe into Haunted Creeper and kill the minions with the with your minions. Just giving yourself to armor, keeping a 4-1 on board, and uh, keeping that Death Spite effect. Yeah, I like it. And then you can even armor up because you do have mana. Is he going ham with a 4-2? I think uh, I think I think what he's doing here is he just wants to get that attack in because he's gonna kill the mad scientist and possibly uh like there's possibly like a freezing or um either a freezing trap or an explosive trap here. Sure. Alright, then turn six high main. Or is it not the high main time? Still throwing the high main on this board, it's not something you really want to be to, to be doing because you do see a lot of ways to deal with it. With Grimash for hyped. I think you do test for the trap first. Like you do have to analyze everything, but um if this is a freezing trap, what happens? Will you attack with first? I guess perhaps you maybe I'm not sure which minion you value more on the field, to be honest. Uh, perhaps you want the Armorsmith on the field because it interacts with 
Brawl a little better. I mean, Brawl plus Armorsmith is a combo after all. Yeah, Armorsmith always wins. Do you think Brawl is any option here with so many different minions? I think this is so Brawl-proof. This is the most Brawl-proof board I've seen in a while. Yeah, exactly. I'm just pretty much all of the Savita's minions have Death Rattle at this point. And I think Hyped might be... Uh, he might be regretting not playing, the, equipping the Death Spite on the previous turn. Yeah, to counter that, um, the high main. Alright, so I guess... He is going for the death spite now. Oh, oh he's going wow. for the kill actually. Wow. Amazing. He's yeah, he's setting up for the Grom kill, so Savita actually needs some kind of taunt here in order to survive. And he doesn't, he's with Wolf Rider. And uh this is not enough, right? With this uh that's five, eight points of damage, plus two, ten, seventeen. Way off. Way off. Um, no way to draw anything. So I believe that's actually 13 points of damage and Hype is going to win this next turn on the back of Grimash. Yeah, pretty amazing there. Like this is definitely not how this matchup typically goes. And I think a lot of it was because uh, Hype just drew all into all his weapons, into all his removal early and just happened to be exactly what he needed. Like he didn't draw into any of his eight or nine drops, his big legendary minions, until probably turn uh, five or six, and the, it just turned out really well with the cruel taskmaster to deal with the lepronome, with uh, just weapons to deal with everything, just all the answers. Oh yeah, and um, I want to just uh, only stress the fact that we were talking about how to deal with the board and how hype can deal with the high main, maybe how to trade with what to uh, attack, but hype realized instantly. That this is a turn where I can just set up lethal for next one and just grasp the victory. And uh, many times people are like saying, "Hey, I I didn't I, I couldn't do anything because he played all the stuff. Just ignore the stuff and then grasp the opportunity to win the game." And here he's getting a win, game two, um, and extending the lead over Savit two to zero. Monk, this is the third time. The third time today, one of the players is getting a two zero start. Are we going to see? Savit's winning? Are we I going mean, to see him? Are we going to see it, game five, basically? It's certainly possible. Like if the trend continues, we are gonna see game five. And if the trend continues, like maybe even Savit will bring the series back, winning three games in a row. Um judging from the last deck, hyped is gonna be in Warlock, and I would have to guess that this is probably gonna be a zoo, because I've actually never seen Hyped play handlock. And hype admittedly, he actually uh, is not he says himself he's like not the best handlock player in the world, but we actually do see handlock from hyped, so very interesting there. All right, so handlock from hyped, and uh, hybrid from Savit, and this hybrid hunter. Oh man, it's like I'm looking at this and I can still wrap my head around it. Just seeing Wolf Rider and High Main and uh, Leper Gnomes, it's it's so awkward, right? But then it actually works, and Pilot Shredder as well. But it's it's certain. So what was actually cut from the deck? I believe Arcane Golem, right? Like this deck is not running Ar Arcane Golems. Uh, usually the deck runs one Arcane Golem. Like the creatures that are cut from Midrange Hunter, for example, are uh, they don't run Doctor Boom or Ragnaros, like the high end creatures. They don't run like Sludge Belchers, no Hound Masters. Um, whereas if you're looking from a Face Hunter perspective, there's no such things as Worgen Infiltrators or Leroy Jenkins, um, or a second Arcane Golem, for instance. All right, so again, we're going to see the Lepernome start for Savi. It's an amazing start, get the damage done. Um, and for Hyped, it's, uh, this is not great. This is okay, but this hand is not great, at, right now at least. So oh, who has an edge in this matchup? That's pretty good. I would definitely say the uh, the Hybrid Hunter. Uh, pretty I much agree. like, they, they have the ability to put so much pressure on the opponent's board and then finish everything off with either quick shots or kill commands. Just so much reach from the Hunter's perspective. Also like having Lothab um, being a card that can lock the spells in a key turn. Uh, high main that's not easily countered because of no Siphon Souls. So it's kind of like a board battle, right? Like Warlock needs some kind of board to stop the Hunter or to have a big Shadow Flame to clear. But... Um, or do you go for face more? Like, what do you do as a hunter? How do you play the game? Well, I think it depends on what your opponent is doing. And 
I kind of really like if your opponent is playing this uh, Sun Fury Protector on two, like I think it's going to be more of a board control game at this point. It's it's uh, compared to like Face Hunter, it's not nearly as uh, board controlly. I would say, uh, Savitz goes for the quick shot, and that's actually going to turn out fairly poorly for him, because uh, quick shot is one of those cards you really want later sta in the later stages of the game. Um, in order to deal those final three points of damage to your opponent directly after he gets a board full of taunts. And also, Typed has a Mortal Coil anyway. So, Savit's uh, thought process was that, okay, I get to save my Mortal Coil, but unfortunately, it was not meant to be. All right. And I want to remind everyone that we are watching HTC Invitational right now with Nimshin Monk. And guys, we are having a giveaway as well. So, if you want to get some swag, tweet at HTC Esports, um, the hashtag HTC Esports, and uh, say if you like the tournament and uh, give us some feedback. Uh, you will be able to, to get into a draw of some of some giveaways. We're giving some shirts, some jerseys, right? Um, one phone, I believe, two tablets. So a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, just a lot of great stuff for any uh, of you Hearthstone fans out there because you can play Hearthstone on three of those, uh, two of those three things that we're giving away. I'll give you a I hint. want to play it's, on it's, jerseys, man. I want to play Hearthstone on jerseys. Well, you can play on a tablet while you're wearing a jersey, or you can play on the tablet on top of a jersey that you have on your bed, for instance. If we ever get a tabletop Hearthstone, like printed cards, we can we will be able to play on jerseys. Just use jerseys as play mats, you know, just put them on the table. One can dream. Yeah. Alright, Monk, so what's happening here? High minion on five. This is powerful. Yep. Definitely. And even though Hyped will be able to practice Freezing Trap with uh, anti heal bot, I don't think it's going to be, it's going to matter that much because uh, first of all, Hyped drew the second anti heal bot. And second of all, healing for healing for seven mana for eight health actually isn't that great against a Hunter player who uh, sometimes has the opportunity to just deal way more damage than that uh, on a single turn. But then again, uh, Savitz is running out of cards. He only has three cards in hand. He will be able to play a, a card each turn, but that uh, Sylvanas is kind of countering high main. Because you, you can't really play... Hmm. Do you go for a 50-50 dog? <laughs> oh, man. Also, like, Hype is so high on health that... Um, Going for face here. Is it in dangerous? Uh, dangerous for which player? Dangerous for Savit because you do get <clears throat> into possible Molten Giant range and you leave the Sylvanas on board. I don't think you're too afraid of Molten Giants at this uh, stage. And um, as the Hunter player, I think you kind of have to play with the thought in mind that he might not have two Molten Giants, because if your opponent has two Molten Giants and a Taunter and healers, he's probably going to win the game anyway. So in the same respect as the Warlock player can't play around two kill commands, you can't play around two Molten Giants. What do you think about the um, Ancient Washer this turn, Defender of Argus and go for face with Sylvanas? 15, you're not going to get um, killed by, by spells on 15 health. It's not like your opponent will double kill command you, double quick shot you. Or like yeah. double kill command, quick shot, hero power. So maybe just setting up a, soul, um, a taunt wall and forcing your opponent to, to trade into that Sylvanas. Just getting some damage in. Okay, uh, yeah. Hype's gonna go with like the full board clear. Probably the most defensive play. And I kind of like that because... Uh, because of what you, you what you have in your hand right now, basically, you do have a molten giant, you do have taunters, and uh, you do have lots of healing. Heal so, bots, yeah, yeah, two heal bots even. So the hand that hyped has right now is pretty much the ideal hand for him. Even even a defender of Argus, so he can actually kill this Lothab without sacrificing his own Lothab. Oh man, if you would get a second molten giant, that'd be so powerful. But still, this turn will be amazing. Can you like do everything? No, okay. Because there was Lothab, you will not be able to play Dark Bomb. But still, just Defend of Argus, so good. Yeah, Nips, Flip. you can't play everything in your hand right now. That's about 20 mana. I was thinking like Molten <laughs> Giant, Defender of Argus, <laughs> and then 
use the Dark Bomb on Lothab and attack with Iron Beak, but well, he unfortunately can't. Still, I don't think I don't think Hype Mind's trading Lothab's here. I mean, if this were like a card game, like a poker game, for instance, like the Golden Lothab would beat the regular Lothab. It's kind of like the Golden Joker or the Colored Joker beats the Black yeah, Joker. Kind right? of. All right, so super powerful turn. There is a, a big taunt back to 19. Double kill command is certainly powerful, but not enough. But there is no, no lethal for hyped yet. Savitz knows this is not the healbot he returned with Freezing Trap. Yeah, so, so even though even though he has two kill commands, which is like pretty much exactly what you want in the late game, with Hyped's two heal bots, Hyped will be able to heal for 24 damage this game, which is just way too much damage for the Hunter to deal with normally. So what do you do? Do you just unleash and um, abuse the Sergeant to kill the free free and leave the dogs on board? You might, but then like, it's it's not really doing anything. And uh, this deck is not running silences, right? Iron Beak being cut. Uh, I think it runs one silence. One silence makes sense, but then no Hunter's Mark. Well, double kill command is a lot of damage, but um, not enough to deal with 25 after the second heal bot. Yeah, what Savitz is really hoping for here is uh, maybe a top deck owl, so he will he'll be able to get like this damage in from his hounds, and with the top deck owl, he'll also be able to uh, double kill command his opponent's face. Yeah, but, because like, uh, it's, it's possible even that the hounds are going to survive here. Exactly. Even in the ideal situation, though, I don't think Savitz can take this game, unfortunately. Yeah, looking really bad for Savitz right now. So, Hype just setting up lethal for next turn. Uh, now the question is how many dogs is he going to kill, or if any. Alright, he feels that there is no need to kill much stuff. Um, even with double kill commands and quick shots. Is it possible with quick shot into quick shot to win this? So double kill command is six mana, then he's three left. Well, Savitz really... already used his first quick shot, and I believe this deck only runs one quick shot, so it's probably not a possibility. All right. Savitz will be looking to survive the following turn, and I believe he can do so, but he'll have to give up both kill commands, which is kind of like giving up like your win conditions altogether. This is tough. You're looking at those dogs. Can't really do much. What would you do, Monk? What would you do? Is it time to kill command yourself in the face twice is the real question. I think it is that time. Or kill command the dogs? Alright, so he's just going for kill command face his opponents. Can he stop lethal here at least? Five. Uh, yeah, that's actually uh, not enough, but we can see from Hype's hand, he has a Ragnaros and he has a Dark Bomb. So yep. even though even though Savitz was uh, one damage off from lethal from his perspective, it was pretty much over. All right, so Hype from Temple Storm is going to take the series versus Team Liquid Savitz. And uh, what a series that was. Um, Hype bringing some interesting decks, like, you know, the Mech Mage with a, a twist with Harrison Jones. Then uh, he had, what was the second deck that he, he was playing? War Contra Warrior, um, also a bit different, and, uh, and a Handlock. So an interesting lineup. He's going to advance to tomorrow to the top eight. And Savitz eliminated. That's the second Team Liquid player eliminated from the tournament, unfortunately. And a third HTC sponsored player, I believe. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I'm still in the tournament. So there will never be zero Team Liquid players uh, in this tournament, right? Yeah, that's true. So Team Liquid and Cloud9 is going to stay alive for sure, whatever happens. Um, the next match, I believe, will be Strife Crow versus Dog. And uh, that will be the last match of that bracket. The winner of Strike vs. Dog is going to play versus Hyped. But uh, right now we're going uh, for a short break. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And we're going to be back.